Welcome everybody to another video. I hope you're all doing well and having a good day. Please excuse the very strange place we're starting in. It will all be explained in another video. Um, <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you do want to see that. I'm going to cover this very strange carbuncle room in the future. But um, yeah, welcome to Stormblood Part 3. What's up, everybody? So I think we, we rounded off the last video. We'd just kind of come into Doma, into the, you know, the eastern side of the world, left Kugane, and done some of the introductory zones, like the Ruby Sea, stuff like that. And now we got to Yangtzea, and Yangtzea was okay. It was definitely one of like the middle of, middle of the ground kind of area. It was better than everything in Alarigo, which was a low bar um, to beat. But it wasn't, I think Ruby C was my favorite coming up to this. Uh, I didn't beat Ruby C, but it was interesting. I liked the, uh, the Farmer's Rebellion, um, the, how powerless they were against the, the Garleans and how you had to turn it around and rebuild their spirit. I thought that was a really good story to tell. It just took a while to tell it. Uh, but Yangtze was pretty good. I, I, I kind of liked how they grew Yuguri here. You know, you went around with like the blow darts and stuff. I think they did a lot right here. And the, the character is it Izzy, it is C. And his, his sister, I thought that was really, really well done. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Uh, overall, Yangtze was really good. Uh, I managed to unlock flying quite fast here. So I spent a lot of time flying around here. Plus the, uh, plus the Namazu are here, which was fantastic. I love those guys. And it just feels like they've just upped. I think I said it in the last video. It just feels like they've upped the production value and the, the budget in this, this, this expansion. Um, some people were saying it's because they dropped PS3 support. I'm not sure if that's the whole of it or they had... I don't know, more budget or more team, but it just feels like there was more little things, like this little thing here. There was no need to include this in the game, but doing so just added variety. It was like, they could have just said, go out and kill five Garleans, but instead it was like, use sleeper darts, and they added the whole little system. And things like that really do go a long way in in breaking breaking up the grind and giving you a bit more immersion. I did make one <laughs> huge mistake though. I um I forgot to take off my Garlean uh my Garlean outfit when I rescued all the all the, uh, all the villagers. So <laughs> it was it was kind of silly um to be in this cutscene looking like a Garlean, looking like one of the uh, soldiers. Um <laughs> I forgot to take it off. But yeah, anyway, this whole area was was pretty cool. I did really like it. Uh, it, it was it was a very short it's like a short story in a in a big expansion that was told very well so yeah this was this was good and then i think when we talk about zones that are good and bad in stormblood or the game as a whole i never had anything that stood out as like it completely blew me away until we got here this is my favorite zone in the entire game i've said before heaven's world's my favorite uh, expansion hands down over everything else that i've played so far however this is the exception the this is the best zone, best questing experience, and best part of the game with, by, a, by a country mile. There's no competition. This was phenomenal. I started streaming this at like five, uh, like 6 p.m. and just went all the way through to like 1 a.m. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop. Uh, I cleared this whole area in like six hours. I could not stop playing. And this was just such a well-told and amazing story. You enter it knowing nobody, lost in a in a new land with new characters, and you leave with friends, troops. Uh, you've got like Hien, who's like a brother in arms. By the end of it, you've 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 reunited that you know so many characters. Just everything felt wholesome here, and there was a really good dungeon with amazing mechanics slapped in the middle. So the the steps area was just just on a whole another level to the rest of the expansion so far, and I'm, I was so happy for it. I think one of the best things about this area was the three three like main tribes. I think they just handled it so well because I, I don't know, Final Fantasy XIV has a way of telling the story and saying a lot and not saying nothing. There's a lot of that in ARR. You'd, you'd watch and read story for like an hour and not learn, any, not, not actually cover anything. Whereas here, they managed to tell you everything about these three tribes and you actually get connected and feel feel attached to these three tribes. But it wouldn't bore you. I, I never got bored and I never felt like I was just getting like law dumped on me. It was always, here's something cool, let's move on. Here's something else interesting about this tribe, let's move on. And as soon as it got a little tedious, they put you onto the next area. And I just thought this area was just paced perfectly. I personally really liked uh, Sadhu's tribe. I thought, you know, she is uh, ultimate waifu of this <laughs> this area. Uh, big fan. But I know, there's, I know there's a lot of love for... Uh, 
the Serena's tribe as well. I don't know, maybe maybe also the uh, the big angry tribe as well in the middle. Uh, I don't know. What was everyone's favorite? What was everyone's favorite tribe here? For me, it was definitely Sadu's, hands down. But I'd like to know what what everybody else's was. And yeah, the 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 instance content like the dungeons still stand out in Stormblood as the uh, as the you know the standout areas that they, they they just never fail to impress. They're just always what, the, the issues I've had with the story here. I've never seen in the dungeons. They just always top tier. And this one was no different. Bardum's, Bardum's Metal was really cool, really cool. The music was like relaxing, but fun. I really want to just go here and do it again. Um, and the second boss here was just crazy. I've never seen anything like it. We did this live on stream and everyone was memeing and we had a vote and everyone was saying I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> die here. But I think through some sheer sheer fluke i managed to pass all these little i don't know what would you call them little little tests little trials i don't know it was basically do you know mechanics like have you picked up the mechanics and luckily from doing like coils and some extremes i did know most of the mechanics that came out here um however i i, I did get very lucky on like the last area i think i was stood i clipped right into something but it let me off and i i, <laughs> I managed to pass this but yeah this was I think this was such a cool idea for a, for a boss, and I wasn't expecting it here of all places. Um, yeah, so really, really cool boss. I just the steps couldn't do anything else to impress me. It was just it was just top tier from start to finish. And yeah, you got a cool little uh, little birdie mount as well for doing it. So yeah, I mean yeah, I, I can't say enough good. And if I ever want to go back and see, try and remember it. We just get back on the bird, right? You just get back on the bird and you're reminded how good the steps are. I think I'm just going to come back here and just chill because, yeah, I think I've fallen in love with the uh, with the steps area. I really, really like it. And then they even managed to, like, end it in a satisfying way. You just had this big, climactic, awesome ending. It was basically like the Ruban fight in at the end Step of... Uh, oh, Sadu. <laughs> Um, yeah, you basically like the uh, the big fight you had at the end of Heaven's Ward 3.1 with Ruban. Um, but it, it was just better. It was just better, cooler. And there were just so many characters involved. And it was just like a massive happy ending. It's rare in Final Fantasy XIV that you get a, a happy ending that's not, uh, you know, entwined with sadness somewhere. But this was just a genuinely happy ending. I loved it. This was so good. Um, great ending. And the characters here... You made it so much better. Magnificent. Plus you got to fight name days for like, what, fifth time? <laughs> and then as you've probably seen uh, in the last few clips, we've been playing a samurai. I've been really enjoying the samurai. I think it's a very well-rounded and well-designed class. And it doesn't, it doesn't fail at much. I think what it does well, it does really well. And it doesn't really let you down in many areas. So yeah, I've been really enjoying samurai. I think it's a good fit for the expansion as well. I was trying to play something a little matching. I didn't want to play ninja or uh, monk, so I went with samurai, and I'm glad I did. So I just want to share like my thoughts on the the story because the samurai story, holy crap! So if you've not played it or you don't want spoilers, I'll, I'll timestamp the next bit. So just jump ahead. Um, let's talk about the level 60 samurai quest. Wow, wow. So yeah, for those that are willing to stick around, you basically go around all through the 50 to 60 quest with uh, your your mentor that you that you get when you unlock the samurai. And you you strike down the, the the wrongdoers, the people who've broke the samurai code. And you're looking for this evil guy called Kogarashi. Kogarashi? Kogarashi? Um, and then it turns out right at the very end, it's your mentor. He is that person. He's the person who broke the samurai code and has been on the run. Um, and you have to strike him down. And you have to do that because it's part of the samurai code. And you've been taught to be a samurai. And it's really sad because... He, you, you you form a bond with him over like 10 levels of questing um and he, he comes across as a really good and and righteous person who you know an, an honorable person um so it's it's very sad to have to fight him plus he's an old man which makes it so much harder uh but yeah it wow this was this was a shocker i wasn't expecting this i no one ever said like the samurai quests are really good so i never expect i mean not many so i never expected it to be um this much of a twist like everyone says play dark knight no one was shouting out play samurai uh for the quests but in my opinion this is one of the best job quests so far this really is one of the best job quests so far uh incredibly sad really good twist and just genuinely just well written i think it, it, it never i never clicked that this would happen at the end 
So, yeah, I, I highly recommend playing Samurai. I think the... I don't know where it's going to go from here at 60, but I, yeah, I highly, highly recommend trying the Samurai job story. And then it, 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 would be, it would be remiss of me to sit here and say, you know, I now love Stormblood. Or Stormblood is this great expansion and positivity everywhere and I love it. Well, that's not the case. If you've been to any of my streams lately, a few of them you might have seen I'm getting a little stressed or frustrated. And that's because for every good area in Stormblood, like the Ruby Sea and, and the Steps, there's probably two areas which I think are bad. Um, and that, that's me being honest. I think anytime you're taken away from the Galleon War, it's great. And then as soon as you get involved with, you know, the, the Alamigo side or you see Xenos, it just falls so flat. I don't know. It feels like one was written by, you know, George A.R.R. R. Martin, R. R. George R.R. R. Martin <laughs> from Game of Thrones. And then, you know, the other one was written by, I don't know, somebody who wrote a kid's book. I, I really don't, I, it really just feels like two different expansions. Um, and every time we're doing anything with Xenos, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to get interested in it. Um, yeah, I'll play in the background this, you know, this six minute unwinnable fight we had with him. Because, I don't know, I just, <laughs> this just kind of sums up what, what, what are they trying to do here? I get what they're trying to show, but why show it like this? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the Garlean War 4.0, Xenos. Because I thought I was, this was like a really bad take on my part. But it seems a lot of people have this similar feeling. I don't know. What's, what does everyone else think? I tried to, I tried to structure my thoughts better um, before recording this video. And the best way I can describe it is... If you think of ARR having really weak and some, there's, we, you know, we all know there's some, there's some, some flops in ARR. There's some weak parts of the story, but then as soon as they finish, you, you, you are led into an amazing banger of a cutscene, and that's like your reward. So if you think of like a weak part of the story, then you get the Titan fight, a weak part of the story, and then you get the the Garuda fight, and you're introduced to Scions and Van Belzar and the Ultima weapon. And it just gets that adrenaline pumping and the excitement back. Whereas here, you'll do like three hours of really, in my opinion, flat story. And this is your reward. Or your reward is Xenos sat on a chair uninterested. And it's it's really hard for me to, to see why why they've done it like this. And I'd love to know, if you if you love this part of the game, what did you like about it? What am I missing here? Or if you felt the same, let me know. But let's not get too tied up with the negatives because there were there are some some absolute bangers in this uh in this expansion and most of it happens in doma you know i think everything in doma pretty much was good and doma castle is kind of like the perfect finale i love the build up of recruiting people in doma and preparing this siege of doma castle and going after yotsuyu i just thought it was so good yotsuyu is an, an amazing villain in my book and the team of people you get, Hien, Gosetsu, um, everybody in the steps, the confederacy, uh, am I missing somebody? The, 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 the turtle people, I can't remember their names. Everyone you get and form this giant alliance and you push into Doma Castle is just so good. And I think Square Enix do a good job because it's hard to make uh, more and more Galleon themed dungeons and have them not all just feel like Praetorium. Uh, I think that's definitely a challenge they have because how, how can you... It must be hard to keep Garleans and robots exciting when there's so many dungeons like it. But yeah, the hats off to them. They've done it again. Doma Castle is incredible. It just... The music, the the theme, the, the idea of flooding the castle. Everything about this dungeon, really, really good. We did it on minimum item level as well and it was genuinely pretty hard. The, 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 it feels like it's a difficulty step up in Stormblood. Um, especially around like 65, it really stepped up. Maybe that's a gearing issue. Um, I even turned my camera off at parts here because I was just enjoying the, the scenery and the environment so much. Um, I was probably playing like shit, but <laughs> it was fun to watch. And then, yeah, you get the, uh, the, 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 Frankenstein, the Frankenstein's monster that is named Days. He, uh, he gets turned, he, he, he digivolves into uh, a chainsaw man, which was pretty cool because he was very, uh, all throughout the game, he was kind of unintimidating and he was a bit of a meme, wasn't he? He was never really a threat. But yeah, here he is wielding his chainsaw, looking like an absolute bad man. And this was, this was fun. Yeah, this was fun. It was good to see him. It was good to see them redeem him. I don't know why he let all those guys go past. <laughs> but it was nice that they redeemed him and gave you a, 
gave you an interesting fight out of him. But as I said at the start of the video, whenever there's a victory, it's normally entwined with some sort of sadness. And yeah, there goes another one of the best characters in Stormblood. They get introduced right near the tail end of Heavensward. And I never grew attached to him until right before the Doma Castle invasion. When you're having a drink with him, he lets his guard down, tells you about his past, how he how he wants to... Uh, yeah, just everything about him, man. And I, I, I literally, about 20 minutes before the invasion, I said on stream, I was like, I really like this guy now. I'm, I'm, he's really growing on me. I'm a huge fan. I think I finally, I finally really like this guy. And this happens. And it's sad. <sighs> this was rough. This was rough. This hit hard. I'd say this was uh this was horse font levels. This was horse font levels of sadness. This this was Square Enix, why'd you do this? <laughs> why'd you do this? And Yotsu, we lost two amazing characters. I know she was a villain, but she was a great character. Um, or anyone else. Yeah, really, really, really good. Amazingly, amazingly written, amazingly done, but very, very, very sad. Um, like I say, it feels like I, I said on stream, yo, is this the end of 4.0? And then I realized it was I was only level 67. <laughs> We've got to go back to Alamigo. Kind of forgot why we were in Doma. Um, but yeah, the, the, Doma, the Doma bit was amazing. I'm probably going to wrap the video up here because that's pretty much everything we've done. I, I feel like I've cleared Doma fairly fast because it was just so good. I pretty much cleared an area a day, an area a stream. I think maybe Ruby Seas took two streams, like two days, and then everything else took one just because I was loving it. I was just so... Um, it just, it just, when, when the story grips me, I just don't want to put it down. And that's kind of how it went in Doma. I just really enjoyed it. I thought the characters were amazingly written. The zones were beautiful. The instance content, like the dungeons and the trials, were really, really fun. And just overall, it was just a great part of the story. I just really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm a little nervous that now we're going back to the Alamigo side and we're fighting the Garleans and Xenos. But hey, I'm not going to judge it before I play it. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping it picks up. I'm hoping there's some really exciting, you know, Final Fantasy level of twist or or drama or something cool happens that isn't just this dude sat on a chair looking uninterested but we will see we'll see where it goes and i will yeah i will share you my more of my honest opinions in part four probably next week um yeah thank you all for coming as always to another one of these videos i really appreciate anyone that's still watching if you're watching from the start thank you so much if you're new around here thank you for picking this series up a lot of people have been coming into streams or leaving comments saying you know I've just been watched some of your series or uh, I just found you recently and I'm enjoying it. So thank you so much if you're new here as well. So yeah, yeah, another big thank you to everyone for just for being here. If you are enjoying this series or these videos in general, um, subscribing to the channel really does help me out a bunch. Other than that, thank you everybody. And I'll catch you in the next video. Or if you want to come along to the live streams, I'll link the Twitch down below. I do stream this three or four nights a week and we are blasting through Stormblood. Thank you all so much. And I'll catch you in the next one.